My name is Jan Nakitanen. I'm the creative director at 3D Systems. Blah. In mass. Fantastiche. Now let's make it fun. So, I design stuff and finish uh, by passport, but I've lived pretty much half my life abroad now. So I lived in Spain, I lived in Holland, and now I'm uh, living in LA. I don't consider myself being a national from a particular country, but just being, I would say, international. From an art form perspective, I consider myself being more of a, not an artist and not a designer, but more as a digital sculptor. So I kind of see everything in that space. So when I first discovered 3D printing, that was somewhere in, in the mid 90s. For so like a future where everybody would have this technology in their homes and you would download the data into your home and you would produce things on demand. And everything that we made to make today in an industrial way, um, 3D printing plays a part in one area of that process chain. So I don't want to make the same thing over and over again. So I don't consider, consider myself being a shoe designer or a furniture designer or even a 3D designer, more, more as in uh, um, how can I take different technologies and put them together? You know, today is 3D printing, but maybe tomorrow it's, you know, fed by augmented reality and drones, I don't know. So in working with Yana, he'll, he'll uh, mention, I'm, I've got this idea and I'm, I'm working on this and I, I, I'm gonna show you more. And he, he, you know, he's investing his time and, and efforts in kind of developing a vision and a, a data set because all of this 3D printing and, and uh, manufacturing requires data. Which is that, you know, any industrial product, I would look at all products having too much matter in them. So if I'm gonna make a pair of shoes, you know, they're really optimized from the amount of material that we use for products. I and mean, if you look behind me, for example, there's a, there's a lounger back there, which is a, a, you know, a fracture of a material of something else that you would have uh, for using the same kind of strength. Uh, my point is that we can reduce the weight, uh, the, the amount of material from all products on the planet. So I'm just trying to be very curious and every, every single day trying to, trying to make a new thing. So every, everything which is completely new that I know nothing about, that's what inspires me, you know. Trying to force yourself to get out of your comfort zone and just have a lot of pain in, in learning something new. Well, 15 years ago, we started a very small company. And I had a big vision of, you know, how we would conquer the world of, you know, having machines and materials and software and these products. And uh, four years ago, uh, we sold the company to 3D Systems and that gave me an enormous boost of being actually able to uh, influence the creation of the technology itself, you know, creating materials and creating software for it, creating the machines themselves, and creating, uh, I'm still of course creating the designs for it, but that creates you, gives you a much more uh, space to move in, in, in having big dreams and, and having industrial companies to back you up. I want to be creating the brush and the paint and the the canvas the material, the canvas coloring, the canvas, all the stuff around as well. You're actually kind of creating your own tools. And then you have a lot of freedom. You know, he questions and challenges the status quo every day. And that's invaluable when you're trying to invent new processes, new materials, and do things that, that have never been done before. Everything that I've always made, I wanted to break the machines. I wanted to make them more consumer appealing so people would also have them in their living rooms instead of having, having it in their garage. So that also kind of keeps the, the mother, you know, <laughs> of the family in a, a, a platform, you know, that maybe she wants to make some high heel shoes at home. So in the, instead of the man just making his uh, stuff in the man cave. You kind of hope for the best, but you never know what's gonna come out. Yeah, so here in my left hand is the first object ever 3D printed by Chuck Call back in 1983. Here in my right hand is a Chase Lounge, a scale model of a Chase Lounge that was designed by Yana Katan. The technology was kind of like you have a big box making a small thing, but now we kind of going out of the box. You're able to have a robot making a thing, you know, give the robot wheels, you know, then the robot can just go and make it even a bigger thing, you know, so I'm working on some very big things, which is super fascinating. It's pretty much for me, you know, visual mathematics. So you have to kind of figure out how it's gonna fold and drape and twist and turn and bend and 
And there it is.